Shri Guru Bionamaha. Welcome to another session of your social science children. Today we are going to see a new lesson in civics, which is all about urban administration. Hope you all remember the rural administration part which we have studied earlier, right? So which was about Panchayati Raj and then about the Patwagi system, station house offices, all these things we have seen. It was completely about rural administration. So now we are going to see about urban administration. So this uh, rural administration is nothing but the administration of village and the rural areas, right? So now we are going to see about the administration of towns and cities and which we call it as urban administration, right? So city, what is a city? It is a place, right? Where it is very much bigger than a village, okay? A place which is very much bigger than a village in size and also in terms of population. We call that place as city, okay? So the place is also bigger than a village and also the population is also more when compared to a village. So that is what we call it as city. And it is an area where usually industries and modern amenities are available. Industries are nothing but a place where more people work. So more, a more number of people are employed in cities. Yes, and also the modern amenities are available in city. So what is meant by amenity? Amenity is nothing but the facility. All the modern facilities are very well available in city, right? So what are all these modern amenities? Hospitals, means of public transports, schools, markets are all found in greater numbers than in villages. So when we compare the facilities, the hospitals, we have more number of hospitals we have in cities. The facilities in hospitals are also more when it is compared to the villages and then the means of public transport, the government buses, trains, whatever it is. Yes, when you go to a very small village, you know what will happen? One hour for only one bus will come for one hour. That's all. No more buses than that, right? So if you miss that bus, you have to wait for next one hour. It is like that when it is in villages. But how about cities? We, we have more number of buses here. All kind of public transport we have here. And then schools and markets are found in greater numbers, right? So we have more number of schools in uh, cities. We have markets, vegetable. We have a separate place for vegetable market. We have separate place for fruit market, for flower market. Like this, we have more number of markets here in cities. And the needs of the people in the cities, the way they lead lives are also completely different from that of people living in rural areas. This is what we have seen in our rural administration lesson also. The needs of the people is completely different from village to city, right? So the requirement is different in village and the requirement is completely different in city. So that uh, the difference is always there. So the nature of administration of a city is quite different from that of a village. So that is what the administration or the method of administration is definitely different when it is in city from the village, okay? So the administration of village is different and the administration of city is completely different. And the local governing bodies of the cities are classified based on the population of city. So we have three different governing bodies in urban administration also, okay? So, uh, it, this classification is made based on the population, size of population, right? So let us see what it is. Yes, so the three main classifications are municipal corporation, municipal council and Nagar Panchayat. Okay, so Nagar Panchayat is for smaller towns. That is the places which are in the phase of developing to city, okay? Towns which are being, uh, getting developed to a city. In that phase, we are using this Nagar Panchayat method. So, otherwise, we are first going to see about the municipal 
corporation. So, for Chennai, we uh, many of you would have seen this corporation of Chennai office which is located in Rippan building. Yes, so we are first going to see about municipal corporation. So, it is, it is an administrative body in charge of the administration of cities where the population is 10 lakhs or more. Okay, so in a particular city, if the population is 10 lakhs and above, then the method, the administration system is municipal corporation. The administrative system which is followed in that place is called as municipal corporation. Okay, so where are, uh, what are all the places we have the corporation in India? Some examples are given here like Delhi, Bo uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Kolkata and Chennai are all the examples of municipal corporations, right? So now we are going to see about how the members of this municipal corporation are chosen. Yes, it is usually by election, okay? So, what is the composition and what are all the decision making structure? How do they make a decision? What are all the functions they do? What is the activity of the municipal corporation? How are the members being selected? That is what we are going to see now. So, first thing for easy administration, see if a city as we have seen that municipal corporation is for administering a city which has a population of 10 lakhs or more. So, is it possible that only one authority can control this 10 lakhs? No. So, for that purpose, we are dividing the city into many number of parts which we call it as wards. Okay. Here, W-A-R-D-S, wards. Okay. So, for easy administration, cities are divided into wards. And so, here in each ward, okay, people choose the representative of that ward for municipal corporation. The people of each ward elect a councillor to the municipal corporation. So, councillor is the representative of one particular ward, okay, for municipal corporation. Clear? So, they are elected for a period of 5 years. So, this is where the local election takes place. Fine, choosing our ward councillor. Right. Now, a municipal corporation is headed by mayor. Okay. So, for each and every ward, we have councillor, right? Ward, councillor and for corporation, we have mayor. Clear? Yes. So, this mayor, he is an elected member of the municipal corporation from amongst themselves. So, all these councillors together, they choose one person to be their mayor. Okay. So, mayor is chosen by the councillors together. Then, the mayor chairs the meetings of the corporation. What is meant by chairs? He conducts. Okay, he conducts or he heads the meeting. Okay, he is the leader of the meeting which is conducted by the corporation. He takes care of conducting the meetings of corporation, right? Next. So, some seats are reserved. So, as we know that for local election, right? For local government and local elections, we know that there should be certain reservation for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. We have studied that already. And then we also know that one third of the seats are to be reserved for women for local governing bodies, right? So, some seats are reserved for the people belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and one third of the seats are reserved for women. So, MPs and MLAs from that area are also the members of municipal corporation. So, who is an MP and who is an MLA? MP is a person whom we call as member of parliament. Okay. So, a MP who is in that particular area, he is also the member of the municipal corporation. The same way, MLA, right? They are the members of 
State Legislative Assembly. Right? So, the uh, a, a MP or an MLA in a particular corporation, they are also the member of that particular corporation, right? Then, so the councillors, what is the work of these councillors? They form different committees to perform various tasks, okay? So, they form different committees to look after and manage different areas of urban administration. So, under this urban administration, there are varieties of tasks to be performed. It could be laying down roads, it could be taking care of the street lights, yes, it could be maintenance of a school, many activities are there. So, the work of the councillor is to form committee for different committees for each and every activity and makes sure that all the activities are carried out properly. And then they also prepare a budget according to which they spend money for various developmental activities. The same thing as we have seen in Gram Sabha and Gram Panchayat. Okay? See, the activities are of course similar, but the place they carry out and the uh, requirement is different. Clear? Yes. So now, uh, they prepare a budget, okay. So, whatever is being alloc allocated for a particular ward or a particular uh, corporation, the amount will be very well planned, okay. So, on what are all the activities they are going to spend the amount, what amount should be allocated for one particular activity, maybe development of roads, okay. So, this amount should be allocated for that. And then checking out all the street lights, yes, this amount should be allocated for that. Development of schools, Yes, this amount should be allocated for that. So, like that, they prepare a budget, okay? So, they prepare a budget and then they spend money on the various activities. And then, the commissioner is the executive officer of the municipal corporation. So, executive, the word executive, hope you remember, this is the place where, yes, the law passed by the legislature is implemented through the executive members. Hope you remember this, yes? Right. So, the commissioner is the executive officer of this municipal corporation. So, the commissioner of a particular municipal corporation, they implement the decisions taken by the corporation. So, whatever decision a corporation takes for that particular uh, city, that has to be implemented by this commissioner and then the municipal commissioner is appointed by state government for a period of five years again. So, municipal commissioner is being appointed by the state government only and that is for a period of five years again. With that, we have come to the end of our first session children. See you soon in the next part of the same lesson. Thank you. To receive our online lessons, Please press the subscribe button and you will receive the latest updates. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha.